Hi, I'm Stephanie Rublitz. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We are talking about using one self-drafted, super easy pattern, one version knit and one version sewn. Okay, so for me, as soon as the snow is on the ground, I want to knit. Um, I, that means I go a lot of the year <laughs> without knitting anything. And it would make sense to kind of have it the other way around, like knit the snuggly things in the summer, that way I have them for winter, but my brain is just not programmed like that. So what I have learned over the years, because I go so long without knitting, is that I need to not start with two of something. Like I need to not start with like socks or mitts or two things that have to match, because after going so long without doing the motions, it's not quite in my body memory, my tension and stuff. And so things just won't end up the same size. So I thought I'd be safe with doing a shrug for my first project of the year, but because I was picky about which way my stitches were going and I didn't have like a long cable needle, um, I wound up doing two of something anyways, but we'll get to that. So I am gonna start with the knit version of the project and then we'll move on to the sewn version. Um, and that's how, even though I'm sewing it in a knit fabric, that's how for the purposes of this video to keep it simple, the knit one is the one I physically knitted and the sewn one is the one I'm sewing, even though it's knit fabric. So for the knit one, the first thing you wanna do is do a swatch. And I know, uh, swatching, it sucks. Especially like you get your wool and you're all excited and you just wanna go for it. But just do yourself a favor, you're self-drafting this pattern, knit yourself a swatch. I did 20 rows by 20 stitches and you'll see it in a second. And that is going to give you your dimensions and you're gonna need those numbers of like how many inches that square turns out or rectangle turns out in order to do your math to figure out how many stitches you're gonna have to cast on. So don't skip this step, don't guess. <laughs> don't just do what I do, I'm six foot one, it might not be the shrug for you if you just use the stitches that I use. Plus, we all know the size of your knitting needles, the the size of your yarn, like that all makes a difference every time. So that's why you should always, always knit a swatch first. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of math. I'm gonna show you how we're going to come up with a pattern and we'll figure out how many stitches you need to cast on. So what we're talking about here to complete this pattern is where the two big factors are two rectangles. Our first rectangle is actually going to be our garment and our second rectangle is going to represent our swatch that we did. We need to know how many of these it's going to take to make this. When we figure out this, we can figure out how much yarn you're going to need and how many stitches you're going to have to cast on. Now to get the length and the width of this uh, rectangle for the garment, what you need to do is you need to measure from your elbow to your shoulder, across your shoulders, and to your elbow. So for me, that's 48 inches. Then you also need to measure from the nape of your neck to however far down you want this thing to hang. For me, that's 28 inches. This swatch was four and three quarters, so that's 4.75 inches by three and a half, so 3.5 inches. So what I need to do is I need to figure out the area of each of these, which is super simple. It's just the one measurement times the other measurement. So for my little rectangle, it's 16.7. And for my big rectangle, that's going to be my garment, it's 1,344 inches square. So then I need to figure out how many of these go into there. So I simply divide this number by this number. And what I get is 80 point, oops, 80.5 if I round it. Now in terms of figuring out how much yarn we need, because that's one of the big problems when you're figuring out any pattern or you're drafting a pattern or basing something on your measurements is how much yarn are you gonna need? So what I know through measuring it, remember I can get 10 of these swatch size pieces out of one ball. This ball was 50 grams and this swatch was five grams. So I know I can get 10 of these swatches out of one ball, which mercifully makes for very easy math, right? 80.5 divided by 10 is gonna be like what, 80 or 8.5? 
So I'm gonna need eight and a half balls of yarn to make this big rectangle for our, for our shrug. I happen to have bought 10, so I'm gonna be able to take one back. I'm cool with that. All right, so the next thing I need to figure out is how many stitches I have to cast on. Now, most people would probably cast on the shorter edge and knit down, especially if you didn't have like really long cables or you didn't wanna to have to have a seam in the middle. Um, but there's a thing that you need to consider. So if you knit from the short edge across, your stitches are gonna go across like this and the garment under the weight of itself is gonna pull a little bit when you're wearing it. And so that's gonna affect how your stitches look. Whereas if you stitch from the top down, when it pulls under the weight of itself, your knit is gonna stay tighter. It's totally personal preference. Some people really dig that. Myself, I don't so much, so I'm gonna knit from the top down. So I need to know how many stitches I'm gonna have to cast on in order to knit from the top down. But the, the math, the process is the same regardless of how you wanna do it. I'm just gonna do it from the wider, the wider um, side. So what I know is because I did 20 stitches by 20 rows to get my little practice piece here, I can get four and three quarter inches out of 20 stitches cast on. So I'm gonna divide my 48 inches, oops, my pen's going on me, by 4.75, which works out to be about like, if we round up, 10.2. So there's 10.2 of these to make up this length. And so there's, since I know that there's 20 stitches in here, I'm going to multiply my 20 stitches by 10.2. So that's 204 stitches. There we go. So I know I need to cast on 204 stitches and I'm gonna need eight and a half balls of yarn. So once I cast on my 204 stitches, the rest I'm just gonna do by measurement. I'll knit it down and I will knit it until I get to my 28 inches. And that's all there is to it. So I'm gonna go away and through the magic of video, I'm going to knit my 1,344 square inches of rectangle, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how we turn that into a garment. Okay, so that whole thing I said about not doing two of the same thing, my first project, because I was picky about my the direction of my stitches, I did just that and uh, so I wound up with the first part of my rectangle for my <laughs> shrug being longer than I wanted it to be. So my options are unravel the whole thing now that I've got my groove back and do it again or just make my other piece shorter. This is a shrug I'm gonna be wearing around my drafty old house that was built in the 50s and has its original windows. So I'm okay with the seam being a little off center. I just can't imagine at this point going back and redoing that whole thing, nor do I wanna just have the other side be the same length um, and just have it be too bulky around my arms. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna carry on. I'm gonna make my other piece a little bit shorter to compensate for the over length on the first piece and my seam will be a little off center. And you know what? It's, it's a handmade garment. It just is what it is. <laughs> All right, now comes time for assembly and it is super easy. All right, so here we go. Here's my rectangle. I've got my big seam in the middle. Um, now I'm going to assemble the shrug before I actually go and do my edging all the way around. And the way that we do that is super simple. On the short ends of my rectangle, I'm going to pull the ends together and I'm just going to use an invisible stitch through my rows of knit and I'm going to knit up the armhole. So the peak of this triangle is where my armhole is going to be. And all I did was I measured around my forearm so that I can make sure that I'm going to leave the armhole big enough. And I'm just gonna continue stitching until I have a hole that is the right size for my arm. As you can see, I'm just going back and forth through my knit stitches from one row to the next. There is a much more complicated stitch for this, uh, but when I tried it with this, it, I just found that it added too much bulk into the stitches um, and it wasn't really necessary. This seems to be holding really well.
There we go. I'm going to tie off my yarn and I'm going to hide my end inside my seam and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, so if you're going to uh, knit your, your edging or your trim on as part of your knit pattern, um, you're going to wind up with it in your arm seams, which is just a total personal preference thing. I'm going to go around um, now that my side seams are together and I'm going to do my edging trim all around my openings for my armholes as well as for the main opening of the garment. At this point, I'm going to go and sit and watch a movie and I'm going to do some edging, just crochet and edging around. I love mixing crochet and knit. I just, I love mixing the textures. I think it's super fun. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So at this point I have my edging on, I have washed it. I am going to block it and let it dry and that is done. So here we are. Honestly, this was a big dud for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't. It was, it's snuggly. It's warm. Like it's nice to wear when I'm sitting in my drafty old house, but it falls off my shoulders. Um, it just, it just was a dud. Okay. I have some ideas about why this didn't work out and we'll get to that at the end. All right. Now let's move on to the sewn one. I bought one meter of this knit fabric. It is super nice. It's a 10 cell cotton Moda spandex blend. Um, it's so soft. So I'm excited about that. I got it at Rick Rack Fabrics in Calgary. If you are in Calgary, um, I don't believe they do online sales yet, but, um, they're kind of the new game in town and they do, I just, I'm kind of in love with them right now. So I'm giving them a shout out. And you can see, I don't have very much left of my fabric. So if you want to be able to do like an edging or something like that, honestly, if you're shorter than me and you have shorter arms than me, you might wind up with enough leftover than you know, more than what I have. Um, but if that's something that you want to do, like a band, like you would see on a t-shirt or something like this, I forgot what I was wearing for a second, uh, then you might want to get a little bit more. But if you do just want to get like one meter or one yard of fabric, a meter and a yard's a little bit different, but you probably would be okay. I did not have enough to do a banded edging. Um, so I'll show you what I did in just a second. All right. So here's my fabric. It's been pre-washed and I have just cut it to the dimensions of the rectangle that I needed. And I did make this one um, so that it would have a bit more drape hanging down than I did my knit one. Now this is a really stretchy fabric, so I need to make sure that my seams are not gonna overstretch and that I'm gonna be popping seams everywhere. So I'm gonna use some stay tape in order to just give a little bit of extra support to my side seams. I actually had a hard time finding this in um, Calgary. I went to the fabric store and they had about 10 different versions of tape that you would use to like fuse two pieces of fabric together. That's not what this is. It has adhesive, iron on adhesive on one side, but not on the other because I still want my fabric to behave like fabric that I'm gonna sew and not use glue to hold my seams together. I am going to link this down below and it is an Amazon affiliate link. I do get a small commission if you do choose to purchase through that link. And if you do use that link, I just want to say thank you for supporting my channel. All right. As you can see, I have um, a drawer open right next to my ironing board. It's super important if you're ironing this onto a stretch fabric to have your fabric supported and not just hanging because then your fabric's going to be stretched when you're ironing that on and you don't want that. You want to iron this on without stretching your fabric at all. So here we are. I've got it all around the edge. Um, and then I went and surged my edges just to make everything super nice and tidy. But you can totally zigzag and honestly with this fabric you don't even really have to worry about the edges. It's not a fabric that's going to fray. Plus there's the stay tape there but I just really like the finished look. All right so now it is time to do the side seams for the armholes. So I'm folding it right sides together and just like I did with my knit one I'm going to sew up that seam on the side while leaving enough um, of an armhole that it's going to be comfortable for me to wear. All right. So here we are. I used a double needle just to give like a little detail to it. Um, it's sort of hard to see in this lighting. Um, but I really like the finish that it gave. 
And here we are. I am in love with this. I mean, for as much of a dud as my first one was, this one is 100% a win. I just, uh, I love it. Hey there, so uh, this conclusion is brought to you by future editing, Stephanie, because I don't know what happened to that last segment. It just like disappeared. Or maybe it didn't record, I, I don't know. But anyway, I'm here to do the conclusion. So as for this knit fabric, the sewn shrug, it is my new favorite thing ever. I've barely taken it off. I absolutely love it. Um, now the knit knitted one, here's the thing. I'm not giving up on that pattern because I think what happened is I made the wrong choice in yarn. I was just thinking I wanted something like heavy and cozy that I could wear in my drafty old house. And um, what I should have done is I should have used a lighter weight yarn. And that was my mistake. So truthfully, what I'm probably gonna do is I'm going to unravel that whole sucker and I'm gonna make something else out of it that is more a, a more appropriate design for that weight of yarn. And I'm still gonna give another kick at the knitted shrug because I love this one so much that um, I just know that if I did one in the proper weight of yarn, I would love the knitted one just as much. So, I mean, give me your thoughts below. Let me know if you think that you would try a pattern like that in knitting or, I mean, maybe maybe you're not a knitter and that's fine too, but it's, a, it's an easy self-drafted pattern. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you would give this a try. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to find out. So that's all I have for you now. It is the end of December. I My studio is all moved about for Christmas. Currently, the work table is completely covered in a puzzle that we start on Boxing Day, which as soon as I'm done editing, I'm going to get back to. And I will not see you again until the new year. So I hope that your 2019 was completely stellar and I hope your 2020 will be even better. And I will see you when it's the 20s again. All right, take care.